So hi everyone. So today we are going to see the agriculture questions in the, the last conduct exam, okay, UPSC, the GS paper three. So usually in uh, paper three, we can expect uh, three, four questions from agriculture. So this year, three questions are from purely from agriculture. <clears throat> so question number four, so how and to what extent would micro irrigation help in solving India's water crisis? Okay, this is the question. So the question is about uh, the role of micro irrigation in uh, solving India's so the water crisis problem. Okay. So and recently these are the uh, evergreen topics in agriculture. So recently we are talking more about in agriculture, uh, we are talking about more of the resource conservation technologies like uh, the uh, precision farming, micro irrigation, conservation agriculture. So these are the latest, uh, the emerging topics in agriculture. So actually this question is highly expected one. <clears throat> okay. So in the micro irrigation, so this is actually a 10 marks question. So two pages for uh, 10 marks. So first um, we have to construct a proper answer structure. Okay, so the introduction, the main body and, and the conclusion. Okay, so in the introduction, so first we can define what is micro irrigation and the facts related to the present water crisis. Okay, so so that we can justify uh, the how micro irrigation help in India's uh, the water crisis. Okay, so in the introduction first we can define micro irrigation, then uh, the main body we can uh, justify how the micro irrigation in addressing India's water crisis. Okay, the significance significance of micro irrigation with some facts. Then finally, so what are the challenges in adopting micro irrigation? and the conclusion way forward, okay? So how to address those challenges and to promote micro irrigation in India, okay? <clears throat> All right. So micro irrigation is a modern method, okay? So here we can, um, we can define first point. So micro irrigation is a modern method of irrigation by this. We are delivering water to the crop plants through drippers or sprinklers, step by step. Okay, so by this method, if the water is irrigated through drippers or sprinklers or foggers or other emitters on surface and subsurface of the land. So this is a common definition for micro irrigation. So the two most common micro systems followed in India are the drip and the sprinkler irrigation system. Okay, they are very famous and the drip is almost okay. That's a most important one, drip irrigation. So we can save nearly 80 to 90 percent of the water through drip irrigation. Okay, so we can achieve maximum efficiency through drip irrigation method, okay. So these are the, the first points okay, in the introduction part. <clears throat> and then, uh, so we have to uh, give some facts regarding uh, the India's uh, the water challenges, okay. So India is currently, India is facing uh, the twin challenges of water scarcity and uh, population explosion. So the country's population is going to touch nearly uh, 1.6 billion people by, 1.6 billion by 2050, okay. So we have to meet the water security so for these people at the same time um, in india regarding the water consumption so agriculture sector is the largest consumer of water in india so it accounts for nearly 90 percent of the uh, the annual fresh water consumption that travels from in the country okay so agriculture sector alone it consumes nearly 90 percent of the annual fresh water okay so these are the facts we have to give so the problem is so why agriculture sector, okay, they contributes more. So that means uh, the fresh water is entirely nearly 90% by agriculture. So the problem is at present, we are uh, practicing many traditional agriculture practices like uh, unscientific practices, like the flooding method of irrigation. So the flooding method is the most common method of irrigation. So here, uh, actually it's called wild flooding. Okay, so we are open the water to the directly to the, the crop field. So without analyzing the soil moisture condition and the climatical factors or the crop conditions, okay? So that's the most unscientific practice of the irrigation, okay? So we are following in many places in India, throughout India, especially for uh, rice cultivation, sugarcane cultivation, and the banana, okay? Actually, these are the, these crops are called the water guzzlers. So highly water consuming crops, okay? Banana, sugarcane, rice, okay? So we can give those facts. So India's uh, per capita water availability is 1,428 kiloliters per year. 
and the annual water availability below 1700 kilolitres per head is considered as a water deficient country. So India at present, it is in a <clears throat> situation of the water deficient country, right? So what are the problems? Uh, the continued irrigation through the traditional and scientific practices like the flooding method and the climate change also. The recently, the global warming, okay, the greenhouse effect on global warming, actually that uh, the global warming that increases the, the risk of the agriculture, okay, so the climate change and the drying up of water bodies is very common, okay, when the temperature increases that leads to, so drying up of water bodies that increases, uh, that leads to high evaporation and transmission loss, okay, so that aggravated the, the water scarcity concerns, especially in the dryland agriculture. So in dryland agriculture, the problem is still worse, okay, right. So water scarcity concerns. So this is where micro irrigation assumes significance, right? So you can give these facts to justify why micro irrigation is necessary at this time, okay? For the water conservation, for water conservation at the same time. So what is the present situation in India regarding the water crisis, okay? <clears throat> so now, okay, this is the introduction part. So now we can uh, justify why micro irrigation? How the micro irrigation <laughs> helps in addressing the India's water crisis, right? <clears throat> so micro irrigation not only address the, um, the problem of water crisis at the same time, it also increases the yield of the crops. Okay, so here, <clears throat> so the overall benefits of micro irrigation, it can increase the yield and decrease the water the consumption and decreases the fertilizer. Okay, overall the total inputs consumption. Okay, it decreases water fertilizer and the lab requirements. Actually, micro irrigation is one of the precision agriculture technique. Okay, so precision agriculture technique. So here, precision agriculture means um, we apply the inputs exactly, precisely in the where it is required. Okay, so we conduct uh, soil testing, uh, we conduct uh, site specific nutrient management under the micro irrigation. So they all consider as precision agriculture. So here in the precision agriculture, we usually we don't waste the resources, the inputs. Okay, so maximum, we can achieve maximum conservation of resources through precision agriculture, right? So by applying water directly to the root zone, so how can we conserve water, uh, the water through micro-irrigation? So here in the micro-irrigation, especially in the drip irrigation, so we apply water directly to the root zone of the crop. So that practice reduces the, the loss of water through, we can avoid the conveyance loss, conveyance loss. Okay, so here the conveyance loss means uh, we take water from the source to the field, okay? <clears throat> so during its course, uh, usually we uh, deliver the water through canals, right? So we can avoid the conveyance loss <clears throat> because in the conveyance, the conveyance, the common conveyance losses are the evaporation, percolation, <clears throat> they, they are the conveyance losses, okay? Right, then a runoff loss also, okay? Runoff loss, excess runoff. Sometimes, okay, in the flooding, it's very common, okay? The runoff loss is very common in the flooding method of irrigation and then a deep percolation and evaporation. So these are the very common losses of water, okay, through irrigation losses. So, <clears throat> so hardly we can achieve only uh, 40 to 50 percentage of efficiency, uh, the water efficiency or irrigation efficiency in the traditional methods, okay. So these losses are unavoidable in the traditional irrigation practices. So micro irrigation, so through its water saving approach, how in the micro irrigation, we deliver the water through, in case of drip irrigation, we deliver the water through uh, the pipelines, so the network of pipelines and tubes, so we can avoid the, all these losses, so the runoff loss, conveyance loss, uh, the percolation and operation loss, because we deliver the water only through tubes, network of tubes and pipes. And moreover, we deliver the water drip by drip in the near the root zone of the crop, so it exactly reaches the root zone, so we don't uh, irrigate the field unnecessarily, okay, only, <clears throat> where it is required, we, we irrigate the water, where it is required, okay? So, <clears throat> so through its water saving approach, it has paved the way for higher water use efficiency around 75 to 90%. And uh, among all the micro irrigation techniques, so drip irrigation has the maximum efficiency, nearly 90%, okay? So 80 to 90% we can achieve, we can uh, improve the, the water conservation technologies, right? So another resource saving practice possible through micro irrigation is fatigation. So apart from uh, the conveyance, okay, we can avoid a conveyance loss, runoff loss, deep percolation or evaporation loss. And 
the microirrigation also enables uh, the use of fertigation technology. So here the fertigation is nothing but application of irrigation, uh, sorry, application of fertilizer through irrigation. Okay. So it's a combination of two words, fertilizer, fertility and uh, irrigation. So fertility plus irrigation. Okay. So fert fertigation, right. So the fertigation results in balanced nutrient application, reduce it also, reduce, okay, we can uh, deliver the water to the crop plants at the same time, we can also reduce the, uh, the nutrient consumption and the fertilizer consumption. Okay, so 7 to 42%. So we can uh, reduce the cost of cultivation for the farmers, right? So these are the advantages of uh, the significance of micro irrigation, right? So we have to emphasize, okay, these points, the, the various losses in the, the traditional method and how, how can we avoid these losses through the micro irrigation technique? And what is the efficiency level, okay? Right, and we can also give an example of the case study, real case study. So the Israel, okay, Israel is one of the best example, and uh, they are well advanced in the micro irrigation techniques. Okay, so a desert nation, you know, it is in the, <clears throat> the Middle East. Okay, so a desert nation of the water scarcity has become a water surplus nation because it adopted the the micro irrigation practices, especially the drip irrigation. So that saves almost three fourth of the water used for uh, the open canals okay <clears throat> right so now the conclusion part okay so here are the challenges so after giving all this justification so we can write the challenges <clears throat> so what are the challenges in the micro irrigation techniques so the challenges um the first and foremost problem okay so the low adoption of micro irrigation systems in india still the micro irrigation okay the area covered in the migration is less than one percent something okay so the low adoption of micro irrigation, the main reason is high cost, involvement of high cost. Okay, it requires a huge cost for the, the for the initial infrastructure. It requires a huge cost. Okay, the the establishment of the network, the pipes and tubes, the migration systems, everything again. Okay? So it is not possible for the small and marginal farmers to practice the migration technique because in India. Nearly 85% of the farmers are small and marginal farmers. So small and marginal farmer means uh, it is based on, okay, the classification is based on the, the land holding size. So the land holding size around um, less than two hectares, okay? <clears throat> so less than two hectares, uh, small farmers and uh, one to two hectares, okay? They are, sorry, less than one marginal farmers and one to two small farmers, okay? So less than two hectares of land, nearly 80% of the land holdings are less than two hectares. So mostly they are a small marginal farmers. So it is not economically feasible to uh, invest in the migration technique, okay? Moreover, they are not, uh, mostly they are poor farmers, especially in the uh, dryland regions. So not economically not feasible in uh, such a small farms, okay? To adopt migration systems, right? <clears throat> That's the main challenge in the migration technique. So we have to, even though the government is providing 50% uh, subsidy, okay? The government is also providing subsidy for uh, adoption of the system, but still it, uh, it's a huge burden, okay? For economic, the cost wise, still it's not uh, economically feasible for a small and marginal farmers, okay? <clears throat> right. So that's the main challenge in the migration system. And moreover, uh, periodically maintenance. So once it is established then, every 10 years ones or 15 years ones, okay, the periodical maintenance is also a major issue, okay. Right. <clears throat> and moreover, not suitable for, uh, okay, so the migration techniques are not suitable for all crops, okay. So mostly at present, we are replacing micro-irrigation only for horticultural crops, mainly for horticultural crops, okay, mostly fruits, sorry, vegetables, okay, right. So not for field crops, it's uh, for rice, for sugarcane, okay, like field crops, it's a little bit difficult. <clears throat> so the conclusion part, so the future revolution in agriculture will come from only from uh, precision farming. In agriculture, okay, the, the, the precision farming is the future of Indian agriculture because it proposes a lot of the resource conservation practices. So the future revolution in agriculture will come from precision farming and uh, micro irrigation is one of the important technique under the precision farming. So it plays a critical role in turning India's the looming water crisis. Okay, so this is a, a conclusion. <clears throat> right. 
So next question, question number 13. So what are the salient features of National Food Security Act 2013? And how has the, the Food Security Bill helped in eliminating hunger and malnutrition in India? So this question again, a 50 marks question. So three pages. So this question consists of two parts. So the first part is a factual, uh, salient features of National Food Security Act 2013. And the second part, how it achieved eliminating the hunger and malnutrition in India after its implementation. Okay, All right. So first, uh, so we have to give introduction regarding the National Food Security Act 2013. So it aims to provide subsidies to food grains to the uh, two thirds of the country's population. Okay, so in urban areas, it is 50% uh, uh, and rural areas, 70% of the population will be covered. Okay, so nearly, so in total, 66 percentage. Okay, so two thirds of the country's population so covered under the Food Security Act 2013. Actually, it's one of the our PDA system. Actually, it strengthens our PDA system. Okay, already we have a public distribution system. So the national after the the coming to force of the Food Security Act, it strengthened the the PDA system. So it provides a legal backup to the the PDA system, the statutory backup to the PDA system. And we are running the world's largest the food security system in the through the PDS operation. The public distribution system. Okay, so the enactment of this landmark legislation brought a paradigm shift in the the approach to food security. So from welfare to a rights-based approach. Okay, so now it's a rights. Okay, so it ensures uh, it provides such a backup. So a yeah, seventy percent rural population should be covered, and the fifty percent of the urban population should be covered under the the TPDS, the public distribution system. So with the uniform enrollment of five kg per person per month, okay? So they have the right to uh, to provide, okay, to get the five kg of food grains per person per month, okay, right. So here, while writing the silent features, okay, we can give small subheadings, okay, within the silent features, okay? And uh, always uh, try to write uh, points by giving number, okay? So don't give the blood points, okay, don't give any, uh, any other uh, symbols, okay? So just use the for always, okay? Well, uh, listing out the points. So I try to use the numbers, okay? One, two, three, four, five. It's a, so presentation wise, moreover, uh, okay? So those, so that the examiners, they will count, okay? So how many points uh, you have written, okay? <clears throat> it's a, very easy for them, right? So the silent features of the act, okay? so you can give one by one. And uh, even if you're giving uh, the points, okay, so you can give you a small subheading. So under this sector, okay, the coverage and the entitlement, uh, how the identification of households, okay, how they identify the households under this um, National Food Security Act. So the maternity benefit, so maternity benefit under this act, nutrition support, okay, so you can give small subheadings within the, the major subheading. So it will give you say, extra marks, okay. Right, <clears throat> and uh, woman empowerment. So it also it, it has also provision for woman empowerment and uh, grievance redressal mechanisms. Then uh, it ensures uh, transparency and accountability. And then food security elements. Okay, it also gives food security elements. So these are the major uh, the features. Okay, so almost eight points. So one and a half pages. Okay, we can write. So because it is equally split. So we can write one and a half pages for uh, the first part and the remaining one and a half pages for um, the justification, okay? All right. <clears throat> so if you're writing almost seven, eight points, okay? So psychologically, you can impact the examiner, okay? So he will feel that. So he has written eight and points, okay? So suppose if you're giving number, so there is a chance that we can get maximum marks. So how has the food security bill eliminating okay, hunger and uh, malnutrition? Yeah. So here again, so you have to give the fact regarding the current position, okay, the current uh, situation of India in uh, the hunger and malnutrition. And uh, according to the Global Hunger Index uh, 2021, so recently, um, the Global Hunger Index was released in 2021. So according to this uh, hunger index, uh, still India's rank is very low, okay? So we're not first. So India's rank is 101. But uh, according to this report, 
um, there is a slight improvement, okay? <clears throat> the India has shown a slight improvement in indicators such as under five mortality rate and the stunting among the, the children and the prevalence of undernourishment. So we have improved in these indicators because in the global hunger index, uh, they also uh, consider these factors, the under five mortality rate, uh, the stunting, undernourishment, okay? They are also uh, the, uh, the criteria under the global hunger index, okay? So based on this report, the India has shown slight improvement in the in these factors, okay, in these indicators. So it's a good sign, okay, right. So we can uh, give these facts. So how it has helped, okay, eliminate hunger and malnutrition. So you have to provide proper source, right? <clears throat> and uh, so in the actually the eliminate hunger and malnutrition. So we are achieving the food security through the our uh, public distribution system. So I already told you the National Food Security Act 2013 the main uh, strength of the NFSC 2013, okay, the main uh, achievement of the NFSC is, so it provided a statutory back, backing to the, our public distribution system. So actually it is strengthened the public, already we are running the world's largest food security program through the public distribution system. So it further strengthened the, the PDA system because now it's a right, it's a right of every the individual. So to get food grain from the, the BPL families okay, to get food grains from the, the PDS outlets, the Russian shops. Okay, All right. So this is a major achievement of the National the Food Security Act. Okay, <clears throat> right. So apart from this, we can also give uh, some other facts to justify this point, eliminating hunger and malnutrition. So according to the UN report, so the undernourished people in India declined by the 60 million between 2600 and 2019. So again, this is a positive improvement, okay? And improved access to the food grains helped improve the hunger outcomes okay, amongst the poor and underprivileged. Then uh, the wide coverage, the wide coverage of uh, nearly 66% of the population will be covered under the scheme. So it increases the resilience in the uh, poor against income shocks, right? Then a uh, stunting in children also reduced, okay? In, uh, so the UN report, and at the same time, uh, we have also uh, seen in the global hung hunger index report also. Okay, so the stunting among the children actually uh, we have shown improvement. Okay, so stunting and uh, children under five years of age have decreased from forty seven point eight percent in two thousand twelve to so thirty four point seven percent in two thousand nineteen. Okay, and uh, monetary compensation uh, against a wage loss during the pregnancy, then now access to healthier food options like fruits, vegetables. Okay. So it is also available, okay, under the National Food Security Act. Then the awareness generated by the, the ASHA workers, the social health activists, okay, have increased the number of infants, okay. So 11.2 million in 2012 to 13.9 million in 2019, okay. So these are the facts that provide a justification to the, um, actually the NFSC, okay, that really uh, helped in eliminating hunger and malnutrition in India. So by providing these facts, we can give the justification, but at the same time, so you have to, okay, so in the conclusion part, still what are the challenges? Okay. So we have not, still we have not achieved a, um, the, the problem of the malnutrition problem, okay? So still India is facing a malnutrition problem. So hunger, we can eliminate somehow, okay? So the hunger is not a major problem. So we have addressed this problem really well. So by covering by covering nearly 60% of population, so the hunger almost okay, we can, uh, so we could tackle that problem, but the malnutrition is still a major problem in India. Okay, so, and moreover, <clears throat> the recent uh, uh, drawbacks, okay, the recent, uh, the low ranking of India in the world hunger index is mainly due to COVID situation. Okay, last two years, the COVID-19, okay, so that caused a major problem in the in addressing the problem of the hunger. Okay, so that's that provided. Uh, that is the main reason. The recent slip in India's ranking, the World Hunger Index. Okay, otherwise, so we have tackled so well in the hunger problem. But malnutrition is still a major challenge for India because uh, through Green Revolution, we have achieved only food security, not nutritional security. Okay, so nutrition security is still a major challenge for India. Okay, so we have achieved only food security. That means 
we have produced enough food grains rice and wheat okay but the nutrition point of view so still there is a deficiency of the hidden, hidden hunger so it's a major problem okay so the hid, hidden hunger is nothing but uh, we have enough um, protein foods carbohydrates but the micronutrients are very less okay that's the problem of the hidden hunger okay so still india is facing these problems okay so these are the challenges so we have to address okay moreover uh, still uh, the problems with the, the pda system also public distribution system okay so there still there are many problems of uh, pds okay. you can uh, list out two three the challenges of pda system and the the malnutrition problem so way forward okay so finally way forward how to address these problems okay so still okay the strengthening of pda system through computerization so we have to um, computerization and increase the accountability and transparency of the pda system and include uh, the promotion of millets so these are the solutions okay the way forward for addressing malnutrition challenges so because uh, millets are the excellent source for micronutrients so they provide fiber vitamins minerals everything okay so we have to provide millets in the pda system so this is the only way we can achieve nutrition security also okay right so then uh, question number 14 so what are the present challenges before crop diversification and uh, how does how do the emerging technologies provide opportunity for uh, crop diversification right so this is again a very general question so uh, again this question is against uh, monocropping so you know you know in india so these are the major uh, the problems okay the first question is also again related to um one of the question related to india's uh, the major major problem in india that is um unscientific method of irrigation the flooding method of irrigation okay so that's why they asked that question on the micro irrigation and here again uh, one more problem in india in okay, indian agriculture the one more problem is monocropping so monocropping is highly prevalent in india and uh, monocropping of mainly rice and wheat so still in india more than 40 percentage of the land area occupied by rice and wheat alone okay <clears throat> and in some areas uh, they practice monocropping uh, regularly generation of generation okay so in the kaveri delta region uh, they grow the rice for uh, all three generations in the punjab haryana and those regions they grow only rice wheat crop rotation no other crop okay so in the in some parts of maharashtra only cotton cotton is the the monocropping okay they follow the cotton monocropping and uh, in some parts of vp they follow the sugarcane monocropping okay so the monocropping is highly prevalent in india actually that's also one of the reason for uh, the the loss of soil fertility at the same time high water consumption the loss of water in the irrigation okay so high water consumption right so to avoid this problem to uh, the crop diversification concept is against monocropping okay right so here the crop diversification refers to addition of new crops and the cropping systems to agriculture production crop uh, climatic zones in india and they are grouped and grouped into 15 major climatic zones okay so there are 127 climatic conditions okay climatic zones in india and they are grouped under 15 major climatic zones the indo gangetic plains the deccan plateau Uh, east coast plain west coast plain then himalayan region so we have variety of the climatic zones in india so it is possible to grow variety of new crops uh, vegetables fruits almost all type of crops tropical crops temperate crops subtropical crops it is possible in india okay so the crop diversification we can achieve so why so what is the significance of crop diversification so we have to in the introduction you have to give you all these points okay so why we have to promote crop diversification because a uh, wider choice in the production of variety of crops so the consumer will benefit from um by growing variety of crops okay so the consumer will get lot of crops then uh, it reduces the risk of the farmer instead of uh, practice mono so in the monocropping if one crop fails then the entire income of farmers okay they will lose the entire income so here we can uh, reduce the risk of the farmer and a better soil health management by rotating various crops 
we can better manage the soil health and we can also okay it also promotes agro processor industries by growing variety of crops vegetables fruits we can promote agro processor industries okay so these are the the main benefits of the crop diversification right so constraints okay what are the challenges you now come to the main part so this is the introduction and the present challenges again this question consists of two parts okay so present challenges and the technologies okay so the challenges the constraints are challenges in the crop diversification rainfall dependent okay and still in india nearly 50 percentage of the area covered under rainfall irrigation and only 45 percent of the area covered under irrigation So here the problem is okay for in order to adapt a variety of crops, more number of crops, the area okay the more yeah, the more area should be covered under the irrigation facilities so that we can adapt the variety of crops. Otherwise, in the rainfall situation, we can grow only a handful of crops. Again and again, most of the farmers are in the rainfall situation. Uh, most of the farmers are small and marginal farmers. So it is not possible to grow a variety of crops. So either we can follow only the rainfall crops like uh, millets. Or oil seeds or pulses, so they are highly suitable in those conditions. Okay, we cannot grow highly water intensity crops in the rainfall situation. Okay, so that hampers. Okay, so we have to increase the irrigation potential, the irrigation area, area under coverage of irrigation. Okay, that is necessary. One of the main challenge in the crop diversification and the inadequate supply of the seeds improved cultivars. The technological challenge. Inadequate supply of seeds and improved cultivars. So the improved varieties are not available for every crop, and uh, quality seeds, good quality seeds for every crop. That's also another challenge. Then uh, the fragmentation of land holdings. So in India, we classify the farmers based on the land holding size, small, marginal, and uh, big farmers. And see, nearly eighty-five percent of the farmers are small, marginal farmers. That means the lands are highly fragmented. Less than two hectares, less than one hectare. So it's very common. Okay, marginal farmers are uh, more in numbers. So the highly fragmented land holdings. Okay, in those situations, it is not possible to adopt new technologies. We cannot adopt micro irrigation. <clears throat> so we cannot grow variety of crops. We cannot use machineries. Okay, so there are the challenges. Okay, the fragmentation of land holdings still it's highly fragmented. Okay, so it's not possible to adopt new technologies at the same time. Uh, the operation of farm machinery is also a major problem. So that also uh, one of the challenge in the the crop diversification. Then inadequate post harvest technology. Okay, so we can uh, promote food processing industries, but the problem is okay if you grow more variety of crops, and the post harvest technology is not available for every crops. So we have to uh, find out the post harvest okay proper the post harvest technology to process to increase value addition of those crops. Then the basic infrastructure like the road network, the irrigation facilities. So they are the the cold storage facilities. They are essential. Okay. Still, there is a lack of the cold storage facilities. Okay. In India, majority of the cold storage facilities only for potato, only for one crop. Okay. So majority of the cold storage facilities only for potato. So the basic infrastructure is lacking. Of, lack of basic infrastructure, road network, storage facilities, marketing. And uh, irrigation facilities. Okay, so these are the challenges. Again, we can uh, here we can give small subheadings. Okay, instead of uh, writing in, a, in the points. Okay, so you can give the numbers and uh, you can give small subheading for each point. Okay, and then you can explain. <clears throat> so what are the emerging technologies we can follow <clears throat> the opportunities? So to promote uh, the crop diversification. So recently, the the IT, okay, the use of ICT in agriculture, the information and communication technology. So it has a great role, okay. It, it will improve the agriculture situation. So the information communication technology, we have developed several apps, okay, and moreover uh, the private companies, okay. So they purchase uh, the products directly from the the farmers because the problem is one of the main problem is, okay. Uh, just now I told you. The basic infrastructure, the marketing facilities. Even if you grow variety of crops, so we have to find a suitable market for, to sell the product. Okay, so here uh, through the the information communication technology, so by developing the apps, the private companies. Okay, 
so we can uh, the farmers they can sell products directly to the uh, the companies okay so that promotes crop diversification so moreover they also uh, promote the value addition technology the post harvest technologies right then uh, precision agriculture also that promotes crop diversification so here we can conserve the resources and the inputs okay so that promotes crop diversification then uh, we can also try the the uh, recent the techniques okay the urban farming aquaponics vertical farming okay so the aquaculture so here we can cultivate uh, crops as well as fish culture okay in aquaculture so it's a combination of crop plus fish culture so we can promote the diversification and digitization okay financial inclusion and digitization so through proper credit supply for the adoption of a migration system and for adoption of the farm machineries okay so digitization and financial inclusion then uh, the precision techniques okay the drip irrigation micro irrigation several schemes are available okay then uh, dryland agriculture also okay we can uh, because the main problem is uh, adoption of the crop diversification is a major challenge in dryland agriculture situation because the water scarcity is a severe problem so <clears throat> in the dryland agriculture we have to find out suitable technologies okay so to adopt the crop diversification so i have given some examples here then uh, soil health management also okay so in the soil health management okay, by providing uh, again by following the precision agriculture so correct amount of fertilizer use and develop organic farming natural farming and um, the soil health card schemes okay so these are the techniques available through which we can better manage the soil health and we can uh, improve the, the crop diversification okay right so these are the emerging the technologies okay <clears throat> so they promote crop diversification by consuming <clears throat> the resources okay less amount of resources less amount of inputs right so we will writing the way forward <clears throat> in the first question in the micro irrigation so in the way forward you can also uh, write about the scheme one uh, scheme okay the very good scheme the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana that promotes micro irrigation scheme micro irrigation sector so you can also uh, the government is also implementing the pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana okay so it's a good initiative on the part of the government to promote micro irrigation you can also mention the scheme name okay in the conclusion part it will give you extra marks right okay thank you